blood of them all, Stratka Evdimova. Few customers enter my shop, three or four at most. And they watch the animals in the cages, never buy them. The room is narrow, and there is no place for me behind the counter, so I usually sit on my old moth-eaten chair behind the door. Hours I stare at frogs, insects, lizards. They wriggle under the yellowish glass plates. Teachers come and take frogs for their biology lessons. Fishermen come and take bait. That is practically all. Soon I'll have to close my shop, and I'll be sorry. The sleepy, gloomy smell of formalin has always given me a sense of peace, a sense of home. I've worked here for five years now. One day, a strange woman enters my room. Her face looked frightened and gray. She approached me, her arms trembling, unnaturally pale, resembling two dead white fish in the dark. The woman did not look at me, nor did she say anything. Her elbows reeled, looking for support on the wooden tables. It seemed she had not come to buy lizards or snails. Perhaps she felt unwell and simply came to the first open door that she found. I was afraid that she would fall, and I took her by the hands. She remained silent and rubbed her lips with a handkerchief. I was at a loss. It was very quiet and dark in the room. Have you mouths here? She asked suddenly. And then I saw her eyes. They resembled old torn cobwebs with a black spider in the middle. The pupil. Moles, I muttered. I, I had to tell her that I'd never sold moles in the shop and that I'd never seen a mole before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the woman wanted to hear something else, an affirmation. I knew it by her eyes by the stir of her fingers as she tried to touch me. I felt uneasy staring at her. I have no morals, I said. She turned to go, silent and crushed, her head drooping between her shoulders. Her steps were small and uncertain. Hey, wait, I shouted. Maybe I have some moles. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> her body jerked. There was pain in her eyes. I felt bad because I couldn't help her. The blood of a mole can cure sick people. <laughs> Only three drops. I was scared. I could feel something evil lurking in the dark. It eases the pain at me, she said, her voice turning into a soft sob. Are you ill, I said. The words whizzed by in the dark humid air and made her body shake. I I'm sorry. My son is ill. Her transparent eyelids hid the faint, desperate glitter of her glance. Her hands lay numb on the counter like firewood. Her narrow shoulders looked narrower in a frayed gray coat. <coughs> a glass of water will make you feel better, I said. She remained motionless, and when her fingers grabbed the glass, her eyelids were still closed. She turned to go, small and frail, her back hunching, her steps noiseless and impotent in the dark. 
I ran after her. I had made up my mind. I'll give you the blood of a mole, I said. The woman stopped in her tracks and covered her face with her hands. It was unbearable to look at her. I, I felt empty. The eyes of the lizard sparkled like pieces of broken glass. I didn't have any mole's blood. I didn't have any moles. <laughs> I imagined the woman in the room sobbing. Perhaps she was still holding her face with her hands. Well, I, I closed the door so she could not see me. Then I cut my left wrist with the knife. The wound bled and slowly oozed into a little glass bottle. After ten drops had dripped to the bottom, I ran back to the room where the woman was waiting for me. Here it is, I said. Blood of a mole. She fingered the transparent bottle. The blood inside sparkled like dying fire. Then she took some money out of her pocket. No, no, I said. Her head hung low. She threw the money on the counter and did not say a word. I wanted to accompany her to the corner. I even poured another glass of water, but she would not wait. The shop was empty again, and the eyes of the lizards glittered like wet pieces of broken glass. Cold, uneventful days pass by. The autumn leaves wear hopelessly in the wind, giving the air a brown appearance. The early winter blizzards hurled snowflakes against the windows and sang in my veins. I could not forget that woman. I'd lied to her. Nobody came into my shop. I tried to imagine what her son would look like. The ground was frozen, the streets were deserted, and the winter tied its icy knot around houses, souls, and rocks. One morning, the door of my shop opened abruptly. The same small gray woman entered, and before I had time to greet her, she rushed and embraced me. Her shoulders were weightless and frail, and her tears were streaking her delicate face. Her whole body shook, and I thought she would collapse, so I caught her trembling arms. Then the woman grabbed my left wrist and held it up to her eyes. The scar of the wound had vanished, but she found the place. Her lips kissed my wrist. Her tears made my face warm. Suddenly it felt cozy and quiet in the room. She wax, she whispered. He wax. She wanted to give me money. Her big black bag was full of different things that she had brought for me. I could feel the woman who braced herself up. Her fingers had become tough and stubborn. I accompanied her to the corner, but she only stayed there beside the street lamp, looking at me, small and smiling in the cold. It was cozy in my dark shop, and the old imperceptible smell of the formula made me feel dizzy with happiness. My old lizards were so beautiful that I thought of them as my own children. In the afternoon of the same day, a strange man entered my room. He was tall, straggly, and frightened. Have you the blood of a mole? He whispered, his eyes piercing through me. I was scared. No, I haven't. I, I've never sold moles here. Oh, uh, you have? 
you have. Three drops. Just three drops. Nothing more. My wife will die. You have! Please! Squeeze my arm, please. Three drops, she'll die. My blood trickled slowly from the wound. The man held the little blotter, and the red drops gleamed in it like embers. Then the man left, and a bundle of banknotes tumbled onto my counterpart. On the following morning, a great whispering mob of strangers waited for me in front of my door. Their hands clutched little glass bottles. Blood of the ball! Blood of the ball! Everybody had a strange patient in their home and a knife in their hands. Thank you.